Welcome to my class. I am Chef Aditya Saxen from Chitkara School of Hospitality. Today we would be learning about the principles of indenting. Now under this video we would be learning about the principles of indenting, the yield of a product, yield calculation, impact of yield on purchasing procedures, standardized purchasing and prompt purchasing system. Now, whenever we talk about principles of indenting, uh, we you know read about four principles of indenting. The first is yield of a product. The second one is type of event. The third one is regional influence. The fourth is service style. Now, in this video today, we will be discussing about the first principle of indenting that is yield of a product. And related to, uh, relatedly, we will be covering a few more topics about yield of a product. Now, when we talk about the yield of a product, what is the definition of yield that comes in, uh, in our mind? Is yield in culinary terms refers to how much you will have of a finished or a processed product. A yield can also be referred to the amount of usable product after it has been processed. Now by processing it could be either peeling or cooking or butchering or discarding of the uh, food product which is not meant to be eaten. Now there is a formula for calculating the percentage of yield. Now that formula is, let me highlight it, let us use stack. Now the Calculation of yield, the yield percentage is been done by a simple that is EP weight over AP weight into 100. Now if you would be thinking what is EP weight and what is AP weight, so let me explain it, what is it. The first is as purchased weight, that is your AP weight. Now it is defined as a weight of an item upon purchase. Supposedly we are purchasing cauliflower and we have purchased 10 kg of cauliflower that would be as purchase weight for the cauliflower. The second is edible portion weight or EP weight. What is EP weight? Now it is defined as the weight of an item subjected to processing and preparation methods making it ready for sale to the guest. It could be as I told, we have purchased 10 kg of cauliflowers. Now we have to process it to make cauliflower masala or gobi masala. So we processed it. After processing it, we discarded the parts which are not edible of gobi. What we did, uh, what remained was a 6 kg of cauliflower from 10 kg of cauliflower that we have purchased. So that 6 kg would be added a portion for us now for calculating the yield of cauliflower. It would be EP weight divided by AP weight into 100. So our EP weight is 6 and our AP weight is 10. That would be 6 divided by 10 into 100 which is 60% of yield. Of, um, that is the ratio of serviable weight to original weight. 60% is serviable. Now there is definitely a product loss in it, the discarded part. So how can we calculate it? The product loss, this part, is AP weight minus EP weight. AP weight was 10, EP weight was 6. So 10 minus 6 is 4 kg of product loss. This is how we calculate the yield. And we compute it and we get a percentage of yield and we also get the product loss quantity. Now the impact of yield on purchasing procedures, what are the impact of yields when we purchase? The first is standardized purchasing, the second is prompt purchase system and the third one is specifications which could be type of product that is being needed. Starting with standardized purchasing, now standardized purchasing under this set standards will be set for purchasing. We know for making gobi masala for certain pack we need it, we require a particular uh, quantity of gobi. 
So we will be knowing how much we had to indent for that particular amount of people we have to serve. The next is volume of indent will be fixed. Exactly the volume will be fixed. Supposing we would we are you know uh, catering for around 100 people, 100 packs. So we would be knowing how much food product will be required to feed 100 packs. As we have already done the yield testing and we have set the recipes, what we generally need is to multiply the amount of products that is being needed with the recipe card for 100 people. Supposedly a recipe card is being made for supposedly 5 people. A particular portion is being served for 5 people. What we had to do is we had to multiply the recipe for 100 people and we get the amount of products that is being required for making food for 100 people. So the purchasing system would be standardized. It would be easy. Next is prompt purchasing system. Again, it would be less hectic for ordering. The chef or the person who is in charge would be indenting easily as he know what amount is required, what quantities are required, what quality is required for purchasing the particular food product. Now the food purchasing will be determined. Now for example, there are two different varieties of oranges. First is the orange is thick, uh, the peel or the outer casing of orange is thick but it is juicy or it is sweet. The second is it has not got a lot of pulp and it is not so much sweet. So what, which kind of orange will be used as a table orange which could be served to the guests in their room in fruit basket and which orange will be used for the soup you know, for the juices. The orange which is less sweet and has got more juice will be served for the uh, will be used for the juices the one with less juice but it is sweet will be used in the guests room for their food basket so the purchases will be determined as per the set standards this is what we would be covering today please stay tuned for the next video so that in that video we would be covering the next three principles of indenting. Stay tuned for this. Please stay safe and stay at home. Thank you.